Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. When I'm brought onto a project for a redesign or an upgrade with custom code, one of the things that really helps me tell if a website is well constructed or poorly constructed is the use or misuse of dynamic pages. Dynamic pages can help you surpass the 100 page limit on Wix websites and really create a website with unlimited pages and just help you organize your data and your pages in a much more user-friendly and SEO-friendly way. So if you want to learn more about dynamic pages, let's get started. So in order to get started with dynamic pages, first you're going to want to have a collection set up with data in your content manager. If you haven't done that yet, you might want to pause this video and first make sure that all your data is stored in a collection. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using this mock data collection. So let's just take a look at what kind of data I have here inside. So you can see here that we have IDs, first name, last name, email. It's just kind of a random list and IP address. And I could actually get rid of this title column if I wanted to by declaring a, another primary. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave it as is. And the way that we're going to create dynamic pages from this collection is by going over here, pressing these three dots, and then we have options to add dynamic pages over here. Uh, there are also options to add dynamic pages from the pages and menu area. So here you have dynamic pages and you can do add to site. And you also can turn on dev mode. And then from the databases, you can also add dynamic pages. I personally like to leave dev mode on, even if this is a no code tutorial and I'm not using any code here to create these dynamic pages, having dev mode on just gives me more control over my website. Uh, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to be adding dynamic pages. And you can see here that there are three options. Uh, one is a list page, one is an item page, and one is a blank page. So a list page will be a centralized page which lists different items that can later be connected to the dynamic item page. So let's go ahead and add that first. And you'll see here now that it takes a little time to create the pages. And this is a list page. And you can see here that we have a few things. So one, we have our mock data data set. And this data set is connected to a repeater. And it's essentially listing the items that I had in my collection. Okay. And these read more buttons are not connected at the moment because I haven't set up title pages yet. But Eventually, we could connect these buttons to our individual item pages. And this page is completely customizable, so you can change whatever is in here in the repeater. You can even delete the repeater completely, replace it with a new repeater, and then link it back up to this dynamic data set. And you can see here that on the left side, uh, this is if you'll have dev mode on, then you can see that we have this mock data all has been added to our mock data pages under dynamic. And here in the pages and menu under dynamic pages, we have the mock data collection and we have this all page. So this all page is kind of like a index um, that will guide people to different specific item pages that you're going to set up, which is really the essence of the dynamic pages. And in order to add those item pages, we're going to go back to our databases and I'm going to add an item page, add dynamic item page. And now it is creating my pages. And essentially what we get here is a template. And again, this can be edited. So all of this text uh, could be deleted. You could replace it with whatever you want. And this is linked to a specific item in the dynamic data set. Uh, at the moment, it's kind of hard to see what it's connected to. But if I take this title, let's say, and I connect it to first name, 
It might take a second to switch over. Let's head into preview mode just to see it. Okay, that didn't change yet. Let's go back to the editor. So nothing is changing here at the moment. So let's go into our collection and try and figure out why that is, and also learn a little bit more about dynamic pages. So when you create the dynamic page, uh, specifically the items page, what Wix will do automatically is generate these two fields over here. So one is for the all page, and that's basically a URL which will take people to the first page that we created for the mock data all. And we'll, it will also create uh, pages for the mock data individual item pages. And you can see here that initially it will, by default, create those pages for title. But since our title field is all empty, essentially it didn't create individual pages. Uh, and that is why currently our data set is not linking to our page. If you have title pages here, then when you do this for the first time, you will likely will not encounter this problem. But I'm happy that I stumbled upon it because maybe I'm helping somebody else out there who also happened to leave their title um, field empty. So in order to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, individual pages, so mock data title, and we're going to need to tap into the settings for this page. And you can see here that you can determine what the URL is for the individual item pages. And the way it works, so you'll have a sub page over here. So here it's mock data one, I'm just going to change this to be mock data, because in general, it's not good practice to have something like dash one. So if you ever see something like that, it's probably not a situation that you want, unless it's really, really at the very end of the URL. Uh, but for a sub path like this, we don't really want it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to switch this title for another value. Okay, because I don't want these URLs to be generated based on the title because we don't have titles. I want them to be generated based on another field. So I'm going to add a field first name. And now what will happen is that all the URLs will be based off of first name. And you can see here that it just popped up 941 items because it kind of generated all those pages based on the URL. And if we go back to our collection, so I'm going to go over here, mock data, open collection. And I scroll here to the right. Then you can see here that this changed as well. And there is mock data. And then the first name is the URL. Okay, so it's important here that you choose a field that you know will be unique. So for example, here, I'm assuming that all the first names are unique, but that's something that might not 100% be true. So in this case, for example, it might be better to use a unique identifier like the ID or to create a new field, which would be, for example, a combination of first name, last name, and ID. And that would be our unique identifier and serve as our unique URL. So let's go back to our item pages and take a look at what changed. So here now you can see that each item page is essentially linked to one item in my collection. And here, this is linked to first name, and so is this. And this seems to be linked to last name. And again, you can go ahead and you can add elements. You can remove elements and link them all to this specific item in the dynamic data set. And you can see here on the upper right, we have the option to choose which item we want to view here in the editor. So I can choose this to, let's say, uh, change this, sorry, to Bartlett. And then this change to display the Bartlett page. This is good if you want to kind of see how your template page will look under different circumstances um, and using different data from your collection. And the same will be true in preview mode. So if I head here into preview mode, then I have this option over here to go ahead and change between the items. 
And when by default, the page is created with these next and previous buttons, which can kind of move back and forth between the items. This may or may not be relevant for your use case. And so you can either leave them, change them, or delete them uh, when you're designing your dynamic page. Now, if we head back to our mock data all page, then we can see that now if I go here to read more, the read more button, I can connect this to data. And I can say that the click action will go to a dynamic page of mock data first name. So it'll go to one of the specific dynamic pages. And if I close this, and I'm going to go ahead and go into preview mode. And now, for example, if I click on read more for Millicent, Millicent, uh, then it will go to that specific page. And if I click here to go back, let's see where it takes me. Maybe it will take me nowhere. I guess the back page hasn't been linked up yet, but for example, I could link this back button up to the items page, and then it would go back to the items page, for example. Uh, and these are just some use cases. I mean, it's really up to your imagination. And the real advantage here is that now I just created more than 900 pages on my website, and it doesn't count towards my 100 page quota. So essentially, you can create a website with unlimited pages. Uh, and that's the basics of dynamic pages. What I'm going to do now is show some slightly more advanced use cases. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is that we can actually add more than one items page to each um, collection and dynamic page collection. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to click Add Dynamic Item Page. And you can see now that it's creating a new set of pages, which appeared over here. And by default, again, it sets it up by title. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and change that. And here you can see it's Mock Data 1 and Title. So I don't want it to say Mock Data 1. But if I try to go ahead and change it to Mock Data, then it, it'll say that there's a conflict. OK, so this new page needs a new sub path. OK, so it can't be that this one will be mock data and this one will also be mock data. So for example, I can change this one to be mock data IP. And obviously, I don't want it for title because we don't have any titles in our collection. So I'm going to add another field, and it'll just be the IP address. And then we're done. And you can see that these dynamic pages have all been added. And if I go into preview mode, and for example, I connect this to our IP address, okay, then you'll see that we have different item pages for each IP address. And what I can do is I can go to my mock data all. And for example, here, I can duplicate this read more button. And I'm going to change what it's linked to. So this new read more button will be linked to mock data IP address. And then if I go into preview mode, and I click here, read more, then it goes to my IP address page that I just created. So this is if you want to create different kinds of templates for the same collection based on what kind of data you want to display or what kind of data you want to focus on, uh, then you can do it like that. This is not always necessarily the best way to add this kind of functionality. Um, sometimes you can create this kind of dynamic view also on your page, uh, but you do have the advantage of adding more URLs to your website, which could be good for SEO if it's done correctly. One last thing I want to show you is another advanced use case, which is similar to this. Uh, but in order to do that, I'm going to be adding a new collection. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I am going to add a new collection. And let's just call this menus. I'm going to go ahead and create it. 
And in this collection, I'm going to create titles, which will be the name of a meal. Okay, so for example, here I have dinner and breakfast and lunch. And here what I'm going to have are individual dishes. So it's going to be a text field and it's going to be dishes. And I'm going to save that and this will be uh, for dinner, we'll have pork. And for breakfast, we'll have eggs. And lunch, we'll have sandwich. Sandwich. And I'm also going to add another set of items. Okay, so again, dinner, breakfast, lunch. And we'll add some more dishes. Okay, so dinner will be uh, steak, and breakfast will be milk, and lunch. This is a very simple menu. I hope your restaurant is a lot better than this. And lunch will be toast. Okay, so essentially we have all our dishes, and they're also categorized by what meal they belong to. Okay, and now if I go ahead and I turn this collection into dynamic pages. So just a refresher, go over here, and here I have menus, and I'm going to add dynamic item page. And here, okay, so we have the name of the, um, of the meal of the day and the name of the dish under it. And I'm going to go over here to settings, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two levels. Okay, so if you remember, the title is the name of the meal. Okay, so it's breakfast, lunch, dinner. And in addition to that, I want to add another field, which will be our dishes. So essentially, it'll go to menus, title, dishes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish my website. And let's go and check out our live site. Uh, I'm sorry, that's from over here. View site. And I'm going to go to menus, breakfast, and eggs. And this takes us to the page for eggs. And if I change this to dinner. What did we have for dinner? I think we had steak for dinner. And that takes us to dinner steak. And we could also just change this to pork. And then it'll take us to dinner pork. Okay, so this is a way to create a multi layer URL, um, which is could be quite good for SEO and really just in general, making it very clear for the user where they're navigating to. So they're in menus, and then they're specifically in dinner, and then they're in pork. Okay, so this is another slightly more advanced use case of dynamic pages. And that's pretty much it for dynamic pages. Um, there might be another small thing here or there that can be done, but this should be enough to really help you, one, escape that limit of the 100 pages per uh, Wix website, and really maximize the potential of your website and efficiency by creating templates and populating them with data instead of creating new individual pages for each use case that you have. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I have new videos coming out weekly, and I hope to see you next time.